Dr. Jill Stein, our guest here today. So thank you all so much, Texas Green Party. It's really an honor to be here, and it's an honor to hear democracy in action, because just being here today and listening to the work that you all are doing, building a real alternative for justice, for peace, for immigrant rights, for jobs, for a sustainable agricultural system, for energy that makes us healthy and sustainable and independent. It's just really, really wonderful and inspirational, and I just want to give you a hand and say you are the future and you're leading the way. So thank you for coming back. And I want to especially note and respect how you have come together with Occupy here, which I think is really, really exciting and needs to be the model for what we are doing as Greens all across the country. And yes, and just your incredible, uh, you know, your, your exemplary runs for local uh, and regional and, and statewide and congressional offices. It's really exciting how you are leading the way on that score too. So thank you so much. And in the limited time, I just want to convey how incredibly historic this moment is, how really exciting. You know, I'm, I'm hearing this in the room today about how important it is that we step up and provide the alternative like you are doing, like your candidates are doing, and like your local chapters and your state party is doing. And I want to underscore that as someone who's going around the country now, really talking to people and witnessing, you know, up close and personal how the rebellion really is uh, rolling ahead, that rebellion is happening. The energy that is there in the Occupy movement, in the student protests, in the democracy revolutions in the Middle East, in the protests against austerity uh, across Europe, uh, the student strikes in California, in, in Canada. That movement for democracy is alive and well. People have hit the breaking point, as you know, on jobs, on health care, on the costs of higher education, on the oppression of our civil liberties, on the oppression of immigrants, whose rights are human rights. On all these counts, we have hit the breaking point. But the exciting thing is that in that breaking point, people are breaking away from the establishment parties, recognizing that it's the Democrats and Obama every bit as much as it's the Republicans. It is that political establishment, which is of, by, and for the 1% and Wall Street, you know, that, that they are raking in the billions like never before. They are rolling in more dough than ever while ordinary Americans are really struggling more than ever. One out of every two families either in poverty or close to it. Uh, you know, things are getting harder and harder for everyday people while the 1% continues to cash in and continues to control the political establishment. So the wonderful thing is that people are waking up to this now and determined to change in the course of this election as well as out in the street for the long haul that we are changing the breaking point into a tipping point to take back the promise of democracy and the peaceful, just, green future that really is within our reach. That is what all of us are talking about. That is what our campaigns are about. And I want to let you know that it is absolutely breathtaking how the doors are being opened for us right now. I never would have dreamed this in my wildest dreams when I got sort of arm twisted uh, to run for office. I thought this would be the hardest race ever and I've run for office many times but I have to tell you it's the easiest race I have ever run because it's like giving out candy talking about a Green New Deal for America, 25 million jobs to green the economy as we eliminate unemployment and make wars for oil obsolete, health care as a human right through Medicare for All, which saves us trillions at the same time it covers everyone comprehensively, downsizing the military, we can cut it in half, 
the budget in half and we'll have plenty of money for everything we need, including let's bail out the students. We bail out the banks who got us into this mess. It's time to bail out the students and make public higher education free. We know that it returns $7 for every dollar invested. It actually pays us. It doesn't cost us. It pays us in the long run. We need to make immigrant rights, human rights, establish a legal and welcoming path to citizenship and be clear that in this country it is immigrants all the way except for our original settlers and the slaves who were brought here uh, through no choice of their own. We are all immigrants on this bus. We need to celebrate and respect the immigrants in this community. And finally, it's time to legalize marijuana because it is a substance which is dangerous because it's illegal. It's not illegal because it's dangerous. <laughs> by the way, on day one, a president, if she wanted to, could put an end to the war on drugs simply by instructing the, uh, the DEA to use science in its list of scheduled substances. That would take marijuana and hemp off the list on day one. Yeah. So, so just to conclude very briefly, we have a breathtaking opportunity People are clamoring for what we are bringing to the table, both a politics of integrity as well as the solutions on the ground that everyday people are clamoring for. And it's not only that we are being greeted. In my campaign, it used to be as green candidates we would show up and they would say, thank you for being here, but I'm sorry you can't speak. Anybody yeah. heard that before? <laughs> well, now it's like, yeah, please come to our rally and speak as a candidate of the Green Party because people need to know that you're there. We are going out, we are speaking to thronging crowds as big as 20,000 people at a cannabis rally in Denver where I was introduced as the Green candidate and by the way, the MC said, we all need to be registering for Greens because because Ron Paul supports marijuana, but we also need a social agenda. We're not going to get that from the Libertarians. We all need to be registering green and voting green. So the public is clamoring, but as you know, it's still a hard fight to fight. And my time is up, so I just want to leave you with this. We are very close to making matching funds. Uh, Texas is about halfway there. We still need to raise about $2,500 in Texas. Please contribute whatever you can, and if you can't contribute, find a friend who can, because we are very close to making it. Once we make it, the floodgates open. We get a dollar for every dollar that we have raised so far. It also gives us incredible legitimacy and credibility. They can't lock you out of the public airwaves when you're being funded by public money. It's much harder for them to do. We're really close. And once we have that money, we're going to use that money to ensure that we have ballot access in just about every state in this nation. We are not a symbolic campaign. We are a real campaign. We are getting incredible attention now. Even when the press tries to diss us, and we were covered two days ago just after my campaign basically made the technical requirements for being the party's nominee. So technically we are there. And the next day I was interviewed by ABC News and they tried to write an article that kind of disparaged us for you know having tens of people expected at our nominating convention and saying that we didn't have a prayer because we weren't raising money from corporations, etc. The title of their article was, Here Come the Greens, More Jobs, Pot, and no more servants for Wall Street. Well, you know, a lot of people read that, even on the ABC News blog, and this totally blew me away, because it went off the charts with likes, and the comments were overwhelmingly, what are you talking about? This isn't radical stuff. This is what we need. I'm a lifelong Democrat, or I'm a lifelong Republican. I am voting green in this next election. a break
breaking point into a tipping point and take back our democracy and the peaceful, just, green future we deserve. I'm going to pass around two sign-up sheets just for us to stay in touch. And if you can make a contribution, uh, make it either by check or by um, on the website because that enables us to get the uh, credit for matching funds. Cash, unfortunately, won't do it. So I'm going to pass this around. If you want to make a contribution but you can't make it, just put a note here. There's a column, uh, donate. Just say what you think you can donate and you'll help us know. We're trying to make that $5,000 threshold this weekend so we can have Texas up there leading the way to public funding for our campaign, the only choice for democracy, peace, and justice in this election. Thank you so much. Um, our goal is to get to 15% in the public opinion polls. That may sound like a high, a high number, but I think there are 30 million students and recent graduates who are all basically indentured servants. There are 50 million people who don't have health care. There are 12 million people at risk for losing their homes. You know, you start adding up those numbers, and these are people who don't need to be convinced that we are their voice in this election and their hope for the future, you add up those numbers, you get to 15% really quick. Once we have made matching funds and we've gotten the ballot access thing done, then we're going to be very focused on doing the outreach to those constituencies. The model here is Tahrir Square. It is uh, Tunisia. How did they do it? They didn't have the help of the corporate press, who we call the O-Press and the Re-Press, as opposed to the real press. You know, so we're going to use that modern technology like Egypt and Tunisia did, which was to use social networking and, and the internet and get the word out uh, among the people who are really, whose lives depend on the solutions we're bringing to the table. So the hope is by getting the word out that we'll get the numbers up to 15% and be able to be there. If we're locked up, we will be out in front of the debate in real time, live streaming the answers so that we will be inserting ourselves.